Hello and welcome to my February plan with me. My name's Elise and today I've got a couple of new things for you. First, as usual, I'm going to do a very brief flip through of what I've got so far for January and explain what I'm loving most about this month's mood tracker. I'm going to show you my new habit tracker that could be especially helpful for someone with a medical condition. I'll be showing you a quick easy spread I've made to help you change any unhealthy reoccurring negative thoughts that I might have. I'm going to show you my secret weapon that I use to find inspiration and put myself in a positive frame of mind. I'll be taking you through my new challenge that I've set myself this month. And finally, I'll be showing you my new and improved weekly spread. So first off is my flip through for January so far. And um, for this month, I decided to go with an Alice in Wonderland theme. I've got my monthly spread, which I've pretty much kept the same for February, as I find it gives me plenty of space for the sort of things that I personally need. Here we have my mood tracker. I gave myself boxes three squares wide so that I could track my mood through AM, midday and PM. And I found this really helpful and that it's helped me to realize that my most productive times are in the mornings. Now this means that when I plan my day ahead, I know the best and worst times to plan different tasks because I've got a better idea of my energy levels. So I really recommend using this kind of mood tracker every now and again so that you can notice any patterns in your energy levels and plan accordingly. I don't always have all my colours with me, so I've also used numbers for each mood. I could just leave it as it is, but I will fill in the corresponding colours because it's easier visually to spot any reoccurring patterns. I have my habit tracker on the right, which is pretty standard this month, but I'm changing that one up for February. Next are my few lines a day pages, where I write a little about what happened that day or what I'm particularly grateful for. I've got my business tracker and my YouTube ideas page. I've got my page titled Little Gems, which I use as a brain dump and space for tasks to get done that month. And now this is my weekly spread, which I loved because I like the layout and having my tasks in a list form, but it was a bit plain, so I've jazzed it up a little bit. I gave myself a mini calendar and highlighted the corresponding week because I like to see where I am in the month. I've got my little plan ahead box, which is just a quick list of the things I need to consider when planning my day ahead. And I also started tracking what I'm eating because after noticing how often I miss breakfast and lunch in my tracker, I finally realized that it's something that needs some attention. So that's everything that I've got for my January spread. And if you want to see the full plan with me video for that one, I've left a link in the description. And I just wanted to show some appreciation to Bettina Schroeder. I'm sorry if I'm not pronouncing that right. Uh, who's done a really pretty recreation. And you can find her on Instagram at triple X disorderly triple X. So onto my planning for February, I've chosen black and gold um, for my color scheme because I wanted to keep it nice and simple and minimal. And I've chosen to decorate with a peacock a peacock theme but I wanted to keep things really simple so that if you're not overly artistic you'll still be able to make your bullet journal look beautiful with minimum effort so other than the peacock that I'm going to draw for my cover page which I trace from a picture on Pinterest the only decoration I use throughout the rest of the spread is a peacock feather now I'd never drawn a peacock feather before and I wasn't sure how to go about it, but I found a step-by-step -step picture on Pinterest and I found that even if you don't get your lines and shapes perfect, you can create something really pretty quite quickly. And a bit later on, I'm going to slow the video down a bit and talk you through how to draw one for yourself step-by-step -step so you can see how easy it is. Now for February, I wanted to give myself an actual activity or process to help me to train my focus on positive things, because we all know how important it is to have a positive outlook on life, but sometimes it's difficult to actually put that into practice. So I've given myself a challenge this month and it requires a new word for each day. So I've written 28 different words that all focus around an aspect of life that I'm wanting to gradually improve. And I'll talk to you more about that and how I'm going to use that a bit further on in the spread. 
To create this whole spread, I used four different pens. The first is a V5 High Tech Point. I also used two of my Tombows from the Grey Colours pack. And for the gold, I used a Pentel Paint Marker in Super Gold with the Extra Fine Point. Now I do find I get um, a little bit of ghosting with the Pentel if I concentrate the ink in one place. If you don't know what ghosting is, it's when you can see the pen come through on the other side of the page. I know some people quite like the ghosting because they feel it gives the journal character, but personally I'm not really a fan because I find it quite distracting. But it's not too bad with this pen and certainly not enough to bother me, but it's definitely something to keep in mind if you're thinking of using this pen. For me, the overall look with the brightness and shine outweighs the slight ghosting. Um, and it's also great for writing on top of black, which you'll see a bit later on. I will also add that this particular journal, which is a Le Mom, is really great when it comes to ghosting and bleed through because the pages are such good quality. They're really thick and smooth, so they're great for heavier duty pens. I just wanted to say that this six minutes um, so far has taken me nearly an hour to narrate because I keep coughing and stumbling over my words because I'm not very well and just editing it out. So it's taking ages. So I'm just going to leave it in. So I'm sorry if I'm coughing all over the place and stumbling over my words, but I want to get this out quick enough for you before <laughs> before the end of January. So now we're on to my monthly spread, which, as I mentioned earlier, I've kept very similar to the previous monthly. There we go. See to the previous monthly pages, because I have plenty of space to write in my appointments and events. And if I do find I need a little extra space, um, I have space outside for extra notes. And in case you're wondering, the box sizes I used for each day are 5 by 6 And in a minute, I'm going to be drawing a side box for notes. Um, and at the top, I actually wrote this week instead of this month. But I managed to correct it really easily, and I'll show you how I did that in a few minutes. I actually made quite a lot of mistakes in this February spread. I don't know if it's just because I'm feeling poorly or what, but to start with, I was sort of panicking and thinking, oh, it's, it's not going to be perfect for the video. And then I thought, you know what? Planning is supposed to be fun and people make mistakes. Uh, it happens and you just got to get used to it. So, I mean, like here, I added, a, added an extra day. Um, so I just wrote oops in the box. <laughs> so now I'm just going to talk you through how I drew the peacock feathers. And I've got this little step by step here for you to make it easier to explain. So first I drew a little sort of teardrop shape with a thin curvy tail. Then you add a sort of egg shape to the top. In the third step, you're just connecting the sides of the egg to the base of the tail. The fourth step, I've added in another line around the teardrop, a circle towards the base of the teardrop, and then a little heart inside that circle. And finally, the fifth step is to add some thin lines coming out of your wiggly tail and teardrop. And you want to follow the rough shape of that egg and your side line guides. I've probably made it sound more complicated than it is, but trust me, if you just have a go, you'll see how easy it is. Bearing in mind, this doesn't have to be neat at all. These are all just guides and you draw them in pencil a lot lighter than I have here. I just wanted to make sure you could see it all clearly. So once you've got your pencil guide, you go in with the pen, go around the heart and the circle and the teardrop shape. Then I go down that sort of wiggly line, but I make it thicker. And I do the same for all those sort of side offshoot squiggles. And I'm not being neat here. I'm just making out the rough shapes. And as you can see, I've got some of them overlapping, but most of them are separate. And once I've got this base, I'm going to go in with the colors or shades, I suppose. I guess black and gray aren't strictly colors. And I'm filling in the teardrop border and the heart with black. 
and I'm making the main head of the feather gold and colouring the little circle in afterwards with a grey tone and I just added that sort of edging there on the side. Now the final stages are the bits that I think really make it pop. I'm filling in a few of those offshoots with the grey, just randomly picking out a few and then I'm doing exactly the same thing with the gold and I'm not really picking specific ones, I'm just sort of scattering it about randomly here and there and everywhere and I've made some of the bases of the gold bits a little bit thicker and then I'm using my gold to draw these random sized dots around it um, I suppose a bit like sparkles um, just because I, I just think it looks pretty <laughs> I went back in with my black afterwards and filled in a couple more of the offshoots but I didn't do too many because I didn't want it to look overwhelmingly dark but I wanted to add a bit of dimension. And there you have your black and gold peacock feather. If you wanted something a bit more colourful you could use a reference picture of an actual peacock feather to get the colours in the right places. So this is how I corrected my mistake on my notes box. I just took some black and gold washi tape and covered up what I'd written before and then added this month at the bottom. Quick, simple, easy. So that's my monthly spread done and now we're on to my new habit tracker. So for this month's habit tracker, I've turned it into a sort of mood slash habit slash symptom hybrid. Um, for those of you that don't know, I have fibromyalgia and I found a quick definition because it's kind of complicated to explain. So it says fibromyalgia is a disorder characterized by widespread musculoskeletal pain accompanied by fatigue, sleep, memory and mood issues. Researchers believe that fibromyalgia amplifies painful sensations by affecting the way your brain processes pain signals. So the point of this spread is to help me see if I can find what triggers a flare up, which is when all the symptoms are magnified, um, or what causes extra pain or extreme fatigue. And that way I can work out what I need to do to reduce the frequency of these flare ups. So I've got my main habits that I track, which are either things that I want to see how frequently I'm doing them, or things that I want to remind myself to do, or just things that I know affect my fibro to one degree or another. And it's pretty much just all the main sort of things I do in a day. And then I've got four charts scaling from one to five to help me determine my level of brain fog, which is something that affects my memory and cognitive process. Um, fatigue, pain and generally feeling poorly. In my weekly spreads I've added in a sleep tracker and I'm going to make an effort to track what I'm eating also and hopefully I'll be able to see if there's any sort of correlation. And then at the bottom I've got my standard mood tracker. I've named the moods rather than used a scale because that means if I feel several different things I can track them all per day rather than only being able to pick one sort of mood level. The great thing about this spread is I don't need any extra colours and it'll be nice and simple to fill in and I think it'll give me a good overall view of my activities and well-being and hopefully help me manage my physical and mental health a little better. I think this sort of spread could also work for other medical conditions where you want to track symptoms and triggers such as chronic fatigue or even for depression and anxiety. I'm also hoping that it will remind me to give myself a break. I found um, that this month I've been sort of beating myself up a bit for not doing better and I think that it's because I spend so much time trying to hide my fibro from others and trying to pretend that it's not there so that it has um, as little impact on others as possible but sometimes I forget that I'm not always functioning as well as others 
um, due to health problems that I can't control. So I'm hoping that seeing the evidence of it will remind me to be kinder to myself and give myself a bit of a break. <laughs> And if any of you struggle with health difficulties, I think it would be a good idea to give yourself a break too. I don't think it's going to be a spread that I use regularly because I don't want to get into the mind frame of obsessing over symptoms and triggers. Um, I just don't want to put too much emphasis on the negative, negative side of things. Um, but I think it's important to address the issue so that I'll be better equipped to manage it. So this next spread is a really, really simple one. I believe wholeheartedly that our thoughts create our reality. And so I get that it's important to think positively, but sometimes it's easier said than done. If you have a really negative, worrisome or stressful thought, it can become really hard to turn it into something really positive because you don't really believe it. And if it's a thought that keeps coming back to you over and over, it means that it's a thought that you've practiced quite a lot. Um, practice thoughts turn into beliefs and beliefs are difficult to change. So to try and combat this, I've decided to write down the negative thought and then find a slightly better thought. So then I can start to consciously repeat this new thought and turn that into a belief. Once I've done that, I can try again to make that thought a little better until I've gradually brought myself to a more positive frame of mind. For example, the thought, I'm terrible at being organised, could turn into, I'm not always unorganised, to, I can remember times where I have been organised, to, there have been times in my life where I've surprised myself with how organised I've been, and so on and so forth. I added this quote at the top to remind myself um, that number one, don't take it all so seriously. And number two, to remind myself that I don't have to be happy and perfect and feeling on top of the world 100% of the time. I'm only human and everyone has an off day. So it says, <laughs> some trite inspirational quote about overcoming things or some shit, I don't know, fuck off. Excuse the language, but I thought it was quite appropriate for what I was trying to achieve. Now we are going on to my challenge spread. And I've picked an area of life that I know isn't my strong point, which is being proactive, planning ahead, getting on with things and seeing things through till the end. I've gotten quite good at telling myself the story of how I'm failing in these areas because I've spent a long time practicing and believing them. And sometimes I'm guilty of mentally beating myself up for not being um, organized enough or proactive enough. I'll tell myself off and be stern with myself, but still struggle to find the motivation to get up and go. And I think it's because sometimes I'm more focused on where I'm going wrong and what I'm not doing right, that it doesn't give my brain a chance to branch out and start changing my habits. I knew I needed um, to start telling myself a new story, but I wasn't sure how. So I came to the conclusion that I needed some prompts. This is where my secret weapon comes in. So this is a book that took me nearly six months to make and I've called it my alpha blocks book because I think of it as containing alphabetical building blocks for all kinds of processes um, that I use like scripting, writing, visualizing, meditation, all those sort of things and it's just crammed full of positive words and it took way longer to make than I'd anticipated, but it was so worth it because it really does work for helping me build the vision of the life that I want, or even for just putting me in a better mood. It's like my little book of comfort and positivity, and I used it to pick out all the words for this month's daily word challenge. If you're interested in knowing all the different ways I use it, let me know in the comments and um, maybe I can make a video for you to show you all the different sort of processes I use with it. So back to the spread, I've given myself a little section for each word and I'm going to fill a new one out every day, really focusing in on the word and describing that word in detail what it means to me, how it makes me feel, and the benefits of feeling that way. 
The idea is that by doing this, when I feel unorganized or unmotivated, I can go back to these words and read through them and give myself a sense of what it feels like to embody them. And as I train my mind slowly towards these words, they will be more available to me um, when I want to start telling myself a different story about myself. And it helps me to visualize the new and improve um, the new and improved version of this aspect of my life. I think it's absolutely fine and actually necessary to admit that there are aspects of yourself that could do with a bit of improvement, because if you don't acknowledge it, then you can't do anything about it. But you've got to find a balance between self-awareness and self-destruction. Once you've acknowledged that you might need a bit of self-improvement, it's important not to fall into the trap of beating yourself up for your so-called flaws and failings. It doesn't help and it's just a waste of your time. Either take steps to modify this aspect of yourself and improve or learn to accept it. So that's it for my challenge spread. I'm going to skip now to my weekly view because you've seen me do my work tracker and my sort of brain dumpy page before. So we'll go straight to the weeklies. So I've kept my weekly spread really similar to what I've been using in January. It's still laid out so that I can put my tasks down in a list form and I've glammed it all up a bit with the washi tape and the different shaded lines because when the week ahead is visually pleasing, I tend to check in more, which helps me stay organised. I added some extra bits in this week. I've kept my small monthly view so I can see where the week falls in the month and I've added a sleep tracker for the week. I messed it up a little bit <laughs> because I added some extra sevens and eights for some reason. Um, but like I say, mistakes happen. I'm learning to embrace it. I've still got my plan ahead box, which, sorry, I had some fluff on my laptop, <laughs> which reminds me what I like to plan for the day ahead. And I've added a mini weekly tracker for the things that I'm aiming to do every day. So we're pretty much at the end of this month's plan with me. I really hope you enjoyed it. As usual, I'll leave the link for the products I'm using in the description below. And if you have any questions, feel free to ask. And before I forget, a few people asked what nail varnish I was wearing in my last video. And I couldn't tell you because it was my mum's, but she's just bought me some. So I can now tell you that it's the brand Rimmel and it's 307 Grape Sorbet. Thanks, mum. <laughs> and you can follow me on Instagram at MissMcKenna369. As usual, I love seeing your recreations, so don't forget to tag me and you may be featured in my next video. I hope you will have a wonderful February and I will see you next time. Bye!